everybody. I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing a session for a client, so I'm going to be sharing psychic wisdom and energy healing. If any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, you can do so by visiting my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. All right, I want to thank you so much for the opportunity to connect with you today, and thank you so much for sharing with us here on YouTube. All right, your goals are short and sweet. We're going to go as guided by spirit, so I'm going to relax and get tuned in, and we will see what the special message is for you today. Here we go. All right, this is the experience. It's still. I'm just standing still. And I experience being an extraordinary crystal. And the crystal is clear and it has a bit of a purple hue to it. And as a crystal, I don't have legs, so I'm not walking around. I'm just standing still. And I'm balanced. And I'm inhaling. And I'm exhaling the balance of my genuine self as this crystal. And I hear someone ask what is like in the audience. <laughs> I hear someone ask, is it amethyst? And I think it seems like amethyst, but let's see, okay? Let's just, I'm going to feel out myself as this crystal. Let's see if it's an amethyst crystal. Okay, this is what comes to me. So you and I are one. You are representing this crystal, okay? And it's not um, a material from our planet, but it vibes from the same family as an amethyst, okay? So it has some unique properties to it that are unfamiliar to us. They say another deeper meaning about it. All right, so here in our world, all right, let's say that the material that builds every experience is based on energy and how we manifest with energy is something we, we give energy into, we put energy into, and then we reap the reward of the next experience and at times here on earth it can lack that sensation of it's a magical world doesn't always feel like a magical world here it feels more practical and it feels more like the black and the white and maybe the gray area and the textbook that tells us the way that it is right now where this crystal comes from which you're representing it feels like the dynamics of this reality have a few more components that add to the quality of it being a magical world okay so this crystal is a has magical properties okay everything has magical properties even in our world but the best i can define it is it has it has something more. It offers something more than we feel like we're going to reap the reward of here, okay? We might have to put a little more effort. I mean, maybe this crystal helps you fly in that dimension. And here, the idea of flying is clearing your mind and meditating. <laughs> it doesn't feel very magical, okay? All right, let me continue forward. I hand you yourself. You appear here before me and I break off this piece of crystal which is actually connected to something much larger. It's just growing out in these different facets and I break off this piece that I see a part of your soul is, is in this. Break it off and I hand it to you. And I say here, here you go but I say here you are. And you say oh I can't take this. You say it's it's odd. It's, you show me a tree that has apples on it, 
and then you take the apple that is yourself and consume it. It just seems odd, you say. And I ask you, why is it I'm called to break this off and then hand it to you? It's like plucking an apple from the tree, but I'm breaking this crystal off of a much larger crystal body and handing you yourself. Then you suddenly cry and you feel a bit of a pulse, um, even a bit of a punch type sensation in your emotional gut. And you're, you're telling me something, let me listen. feel a lack in the world that you live in and there's no bridge between this world and that world that world that you are already a part of and I broke you off of that world to hand you to yourself in this world it's kind of like how dare you Abby <laughs> how you dare you take me from the magical apple from the magical tree and now hand me to myself in some dimension where it lacks magic how dare you and then ask me to consume myself <laughs> it's like maybe maybe there's something we do, need to give it a try maybe you should just try to drink in yourself from this crystal and just see what happens we can always reverse time and then try this again <laughs> If it turns out to be the response we don't want, then we just, we go back to our old save point and then we try it again until <laughs> we get the outcome we want. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens here. You're really serious. I hand you this crystal again. I hand you this crystal again. I hand you this crystal again. And it's upside down, so the point is is pointing to the earth. And it's almost like it's turning into a glass, like it's an elixir, and you drink it. And I see your energy body inside the crystal, like you're supposed to drink yourself down, okay? But you don't take it. You don't take it. You don't take it. So we're stuck in a glitch. Maybe I'm the glitch continuing to encourage you to do something you don't want to do do it do it do it <laughs> hmm you say you would prefer to bridge a gap and be in this magical world where i am actually standing still it's like there's a line between Earth or our reality and this other reality. It's just a very thin line that separates the two. Hmm. Boy, you're telling me so many things. You also say that I am degrading of the energy self that you are in the crystal in the magical side so when I give it to you over the thin line to the non-magical world it alters the component on the inside and you don't like how you are being broken down by this change in the crystal mm. Again, you're really emotionally distraught and you're really upset and you're really angry. So we're still getting to the root of, of what is really upsetting you here. I feel lighthearted. I feel like this whole exchange is safe. I feel like I'm having fun with it. I find it interesting and fascinating. Every part of your being is, I find this distasteful, okay, distasteful. Interesting as we're looking at an apple on a tree. We're looking at an elixir of your own life is something distasteful I'm gonna ask your higher self What do you recommend? <laughs> your higher self <laughs> Your higher self is a goofball. All right He's he's a male energy right now and he's like he puts his hands up and starts slowly backing away and he's kind of laughing like are you talking to me the higher self what are you talking to me <laughs> and he's slowly backing away because it's your choice your choice in this life your higher self is not telling you what to do is letting you decide what you want to experience higher self let's say is showing me like the tree 
the higher self is like the tree and all the apples on the tree and you are like an apple you, you in this life in this present life is an apple of many apples on the whole tree as you are the whole tree as you are all the apples just like this mother crystal has many parts of herself and maybe that's the female side of you i don't know but um i like it as it was described as a mother crystal um, has many facets of herself and I take one facet which all these facets are also you as you are also the mother, mother crystal but that it's just like breaks it down to an individual perspective and your higher self as, as the tree is not telling its apples what to do the apples decide how they want to experience their existence you decide okay your higher self is, I don't know why he's being so funny right now. There's a reason why your session has to do with laughter and lightheartedness versus seriousness, a non-magical world, a magical world, and even the concept of the higher self now coming through here. So all these components are a part of the message, okay? And we're unraveling the mystery. What does all this stuff mean? I don't know. We're discovering it as we go. So let's see what comes next. I still feel this distaste in your stomach. Like it's like a, a punch, but it's not painful. It's just pressure, like a buildup of pressure. And it makes you emotional and it makes you more serious and disappointed than anything. And I tell you, it'll be very hard for you to make an inspiring and positive step step forward when you're holding on to this kind of cluster of negativity so if we're going to get a, a certain type of outcome then we need to shift into the energy of that outcome within yourself okay so let's say you want a magical outcome you're going to have to start vibing as a magical being and maybe you need to reach for the elixir of your magical self to drink your magical self down so that you feel more of a bond and a parallelness <laughs> or oneness <laughs> with that influence to be more magical, to feel more magical, to manifest more magic in a non-magical world that also is more magical than we know. See if we can get you to shift. More, 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 more. You're, you're starving, actually, and thirsting, actually. Starving and thirsting. Apples and elixirs. <laughs> For more of this... I know, the, I know what the starvation is. I know what this thirst is. It's like... I could have a saltine cracker every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I could listen to the exact same song every day for the rest of my life in this non-magical world. And it's going to feel a bit like plastic, okay? And the starved soul within the non-magical human longs for more of the power of the spirit energy or the alien beings that we would like to talk to. Um, more of a vast and creative, colorful, infinite experience. And you're starving, thirsting for more of that in your life. I mean, you really are. And it's like you can't have it. You can't have that. Is that where the thin line between the non-magical earth and this other place and now drink the elixir of yourself and it feels wrong? I look at your higher self and I don't know if I just want more laughter or I want to see what funny thing he's doing next. And okay, higher self is now becoming serious. Because the message, the answer, is serious. Because you, you... It's all there. You could say you taste the fruits of your imagination, but none of it feels real. Because you're not allowing your imagination to be a part of reality. It's not a fake place. It's a magical place. 
your imagination is a cover-up term for your psychic center. Where does your imagination exist? In your third eye. But where does your intellect exist? And how do we blend imagination with intellect, with humor, with seriousness, with happiness, with laughter, with, with all this stuff is in our mind, right? But it's also in our emotions. And it's also above our head and below our feet. And it's also in everything that we touch, breathe, smell. You know, it's, it's part of our whole and the embodiment of our whole experience. We have access to everything. And there is no veil but that, that separates the non-magical from the magical. It's how you perceive your connection with it and how it flows through you. Okay. I'm going to just say that and I want to keep... We're, we're actually doing some energy work to break down a feeling of separation for you, okay? So that you feel like you embody magic. And it is magical. Talking to alien beings would be a magical thing, you know, for a lot of people. The idea of talking to beings that are benevolent and wise and um, crafty, like they have technology beyond our wildest imaginations and they, they're here to help us. Let's say that would be a magical exchange, wouldn't it? Would be so neat. Would it be actually magical or would it just be like talking to somebody that doesn't look exactly like you, doesn't talk exactly like you, doesn't behave exactly like you? So what would really make that that magical? Because it's out of this world. It's off the charts different, right? So magical is something that's off the charts different and positive at the same time. I guarantee there's some magic that's not very warm and fuzzy <laughs> if we want to go there, right? This is so good. This is so healthy. I, this conversation is like a scrub for your system. It's like you're getting the, an awesome energy bath and you're getting scrubbed in all the crevices. There's something really wonderful about this conversation for, your, for you, for your inner selves. It's like this part of you is being acknowledged. This, this dull feeling is being acknowledged. Your struggle with it is being acknowledged and we're looking at it, we're talking about it, we care about your feelings about it and i say what are you going to do with this crystal elixir with a magical amethyst versus the non-magical amethyst <laughs> i say stay with it because i hand it to you and you actually hold it and it looks like a tusk it's in the shape of a tusk okay and it's purple and clear at the same time and it's got liquid in it and I see a part of your soul in it and you clench it really tight like you're gonna break it and you're really angry and I say stay with that feeling stay with that feeling just stay with that feeling be angry clenched wanna break this hate everything about this conversation, this place of non-magic, whatever it is, just let's stay with this emotion. Let's not throw the emotion away. Let's stay with the emotion. <sighs> that was a really wonderful sneeze right there. Okay. The energies, when they get juicy, they make me sneeze. It doesn't happen very often, but that's actually a really good sign. Okay. You're doing a good job staying with it. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> We're all staying with it with you. Okay, talk to me. There's many shattered voices of yourself. It's hard to pick out which one specific to listen to, but they're all kind of saying something similar. And my guides all say it doesn't matter what the exact words are. Basically, they're expressing disappointment and confusion and feeling lost. 
and they can't get out of these separately broken pieces of the one mirror of yourself based on this very, it's like a splinter of a totality, but it's a big deal in this present moment for you on earth, okay, as a human. It might be a thin thing, but actually a, a robust thing right now for your soul and what you're going through. We're gonna go into the pieces of disappointment Again, it has to do with enrichment that's lacking. Enrichment. That's the best word. Enrichment. You're starving and thirsting for enrichment. And the hollow bangs his fist on the table and he stays hollow like dried up wood, but it's all carved thin. Doesn't have much of a structure. We're clearing this right on out because we're going to bring you to a place where you can tell that enrichment has been every part, every second, every minute, hour, day of your life has been enriching. And any part of you that says it wasn't, we're going to fill them with the sensation of enrichment, the actual feeling of it we're going to choose to feel enriched. What do you guys think enrichment feels like? Could you conjure up like an actor, an actress, pretend to feel enriched? Now take out the word I'm pretending to feel enriched and just feel enriched. Now you actually are choosing to feel enriched. Even if you have to try a little bit at first, it will come easier. By embodying enrichment, you live in an enriching reality. Allow enrichment then to reveal itself to you, okay? Boy, huge, huge shifts going on with the heart, the emotional gut, the third eye, crown chakra. You want movement, a motivation. You want something, I guess... I see a rock rolling down the hill. The rolling stone gathers no moss, but then it just stops right in front of your feet. And it has nowhere else to roll because its goal was to roll to you, to be received by you. You then become its purpose or the next part of its own life experience. The rolling stone reaches you. You are angered by this as well. You pick up the rolling stone, now not rolling in your hands. It's the size of a basketball. It's very dry. And you want to just chuck it and tell it to just go somewhere else. Let's hear this out again. It's like the broken parts of the mirror and the disappointment and all that. Let's hear more about this vibrationally. Something has been given to you something magical more magical than you ever gave it credit for but you chose to see it as just a dumb rock pick it up and throw it away this is bringing me into a thread of a younger you something was I hear I hear our assessment of this the dumb rock but what if it's a deflection? What if you were the dumb rock and now you've run into a dumb rock? It's deflecting it out of yourself and putting it into something else when that dumb rock was just you. Now you're just throwing yourself away. Again, you are this magical elixir and <laughs> you drink yourself down. The magical apple. <laughs> 
consume yourself. <laughs> These words are a bit odd, I know, but th there's something of value to this. There's, there's nothing wrong in this. You still can't shift from this picking up the rock and throwing it. And I, I experienced um, many ripples of, of a dried out substance, like really dried out dirt and their like hands in your heart. And I feel that across your chest. And you can't get it to come out. Even if you breathe and put pressure on it to pop it out or to break it down and let it crumble out, it just doesn't. It's almost like when you try, it grips even that much harder. <sighs> and I start to see your You're a bit stuck, okay? In this scene of you being stuck, you have, you're basically hanging from a ceiling, okay? And because your hands are tied, your legs are tied, you're going nowhere. I mean, you're just in this, the centerpiece of a room because you're in the middle of it, because you're perfectly hanging from a ceiling with your legs are, are tied to the floor. So you're like a pillar in a way. <laughs> I don't know why this is funny. And I, I just go to you and I say, you're perfect. You're perfectly in the center. And you can't move. It's, it's perfect. <laughs> I say, did you want to go somewhere? I don't have anything to remove these ropes with. And I realize the burden is on your own shoulders. Like, there's nobody coming in to help set you free. You're going to have to figure out how to set yourself free. Hmm. I show you this tusk with the amethyst crystal slash elixir of your magical self. And I, I say, what does this, do you feel, have to do with you being bound like this? And you resisting, the one thing I keep giving you, you just keep resisting it. Why are you doing that? It's almost like, let's say you have a spirit guide or you have like a hunch or a, a, an intuition of sorts that's like, here you go, here you go, here you go, here you go. And you just deflect and ignore and you want nothing, that's not going to work, and why would I ever do that? And there's just, like, you keep giving it the cold shoulder and saying all this other stuff, and it just keeps giving it to you again and again. And it, so it's, it's like it's taking time for you to just stop and take the stinking freaking crystal. <laughs> We're working through these many layers so that you're free, okay? Because this is, this is valuable. There's something really valuable here. And it's you having access to yourself, realizing there was no separation between a non-magic and a magical you or world, and that it was all within you all along. You have to choose to accept that into yourself therefore accepting enrichment into yourself into your life be enrichment now exist in an enriching life i'm going to choose to see a version of you in time that does finally take this from my hand and then drink it down and i want to see what happens Oh man, it tastes terrible. It 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 does taste like a purple grape juice, but it tastes um, really really bitter. It doesn't have a wine flavor to it. It's it's like a pepper in it, and it's like a sour rancid taste, like a rancid fruit. But just the first taste is the second is better, and it gets better actually. And it's not 
because it's intoxicating you, like, ew, um, first taste of this gross wine, it tastes better as I get drunk or something. No, this is actually, it only tastes bad because it's clearing that taste out of your mouth or out of your senses. So the bad that we're tasting is basically just a rancidness that's collected that this is purifying. We just happen to taste the process of purification because it's, it's absolutely tranquil to, to consume this as it, it goes all the way down. It becomes what is tranquil, the taste of tranquility. And you have a lot of resistance to this at first because I see you're kind of grabbing your stomach, but you feel all these strange popping and bubbling sensations throughout your body, head to toe. And I say, just let it be, just let it happen. And it's almost like for the worlds to merge, there'll have to be an element of pain involved, and that's not true. But you say it is true because to detox is a painful process of letting go of something I was intoxicated by at one time. Now I am detoxing and it is hard to let go. And therefore there is pain involved. And this detox is painful. Like it's like little bits of glass shards actually coming through your stomach, through your skin, out your face. And it's pretty horrific to watch. It's, it's actually instantly clearing though. I mean, there's some moments of pretty disturbing pain, but once, I mean, I, you feel tremendous, you feel great. And I see what is part of that crystal and the elixir is dancing in your heart and is so proud of you is the spirit of yourself that you allowed into yourself that you can participate in the magic of, of all the magic of all creation, magic of this physical realm versus energy realms, um, versus alien being interactions, a psychic experience, a practical experience is like it all is here. Animals, plants, you know, <laughs> fantasies, dreams, um, manifesting like it all, it all, it all, it all, it all, it all is here, right? The elements, the water, the air, the fire, like the ground, the earth, like time, history. Like everything that makes it enchanting to be is all just flowing through you. And we don't have to define it as magical or not magical. It, it's just, it's, it's your existence. It's beautiful. It is you. You. This is you. You are you. You are allowing yourself to be you. And your higher self is clapping and hooting and hollering like cheering you on so proud and wants you to face the you that's still hanging as in to tell him it's almost like stop tying yourself up and needing someone else to help you when you were the creation of this to begin with you help yourself and it's it's like the main point is, is this hardship is over kind of thing like it's done Clo we're, it's like closing the door and it feels like well it's not resolved yet it was resolved so long ago it was resolved a very long time ago so the door that's closing is upon a room that's empty and therefore there is no room there is no door there is no pain there's nothing there nothing That's what I'm called to share. Thank you so much for this. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for sharing with all of us here on YouTube. And I hope you all have a very wonderful day.